here. What's up, everybody? It's Decepticon's favorite nerd, and today we are looking at Fans Toy Sovereign. The reason why I say Decepticon, he's a friend of mine, and he's a huge Galvatron fan, so just giving him a little love on this. A lot of people have been asking about this review, and I've been telling everybody it was coming. The, the thing is, is you know, I, I had it pre-ordered. I pre-ordered with 215 Toys, and I had it pre-ordered, and I was just waiting for it to come in, and it came to me. There was no early shot at this guy for me, and you know, that's not always a given scenario with me, so that's just the way the, the cookie happened to crumble this time. But there is a lot to talk about. There's even a lot more to transform. Let's go ahead and get looking at accessories. He comes with two cannons. Uh, one is the more toy accurate with the translucent plastic, and the other is the more show accurate with sort of a... Uh, sort of a metallic fleck finish on the the orange which I prefer and then the the gunmetal paint there uh, they both transform so that you can have them in cannon mode or in robot mode just by uh, taking this piece and opening up and then you can kind of use that one as a lever to open that up you flip the whole thing 180 and close it back and then this slides into the head and then vice versa for this one now there I've seen people saying that the the fit is not good to go into arm mode uh, or to sit, sit on the arm. And I can't speak for everybody. I can only speak for mine, but I thought the same until I pushed a little bit harder. So, so to speak. Uh, the port is right there. He's got one on both forearms and you can kind of get it in and it just sits there and it's loose. Uh, but if you sit it in and then click it in, it stays with no problem whatsoever. You know, I had to hit it pretty hard to get it to come out, so to speak. And if it's dual wielding cannons you want, that's an option as well. And once again, it's a fair amount of force you got to hit them with in order to knock them out. He comes with a matrix because they're always looking for an excuse to put a matrix accessory in with the set. But this one actually does kind of make sense. And not that the others don't, but, you know, it just gets a little tiresome having a thousand matrix line around your house. Um, it is nice. There's die cast. It's got the gold and silver or chrome type finish. And then it's got the blue jewel in there and then the nice silver chain. And, of course, he can wear it around his neck as long as you account for uh, kind of the span of his head. It does sit at a really nice level. You know, it's like it's a, it's a well thought out chain in terms of links. He also comes with this blast effect. It's made up of one, two, three, four, five pieces of, of pla well, it's really six, but let's, I think, yeah. But let's not hold it against them. Uh, the problem is it is a softer plastic, which is nice. They all, all, they all are articulated so that you can get the, the little, sort of Super Saiyan effects right where you want them. But at the same time, it's a softer plastic. And as you can tell, like mine is not sitting in a very natural position. It's sort of a, sort of a sad effect. So cool thought, maybe not uh, executed the best. It is a nice purple translucent though, and it does fit in the barrel nicely. It's heavy though, so we're gonna see how that affects the figure. Now, I think this is intended for cannon mode, which we will also look at, but as far as robot mode, not a chance. Just way, way too heavy. Utilizing the front swivel, way too heavy. Using the double jointed elbow, pretty much way too heavy. He comes with an extra face, which is a very angry face if you're into, you know, super -y. Yeah, emoting type faces, then this will work for you. It, it's not really of any interest to me. I, I, I can take a smirk and stuff like that, but I, I'm not really into like the super show of emotion. And then he also comes with a extra perceptor face. Uh, there's been a lot of complaints about the Tesla face. Mine doesn't really bother me, but if yours bothers you and you prefer this, then you have this option. Uh, I personally, uh, I'm, I'm not even sure. Let me make sure I know what I'm doing here. I don't. I'm not even sure that uh, that this isn't worse in a lot of ways. Like the chin is a little bit weird. Uh, I've seen people use the the Inferno face, and that seems to work uh, from the Masterpiece to Car Inferno. But yeah, I'm not sure that this is worth the cost of admission here in order to switch it out. And lastly, he comes with a display base. It's the same one that came with Soar, uh, but. I can personally never get enough display bases, so uh, kudos to them. And it does work for displaying him, so if it's Leaping Galvatrons you want, uh, Leaping Galvatrons you shall have. Uh, the only real articulation is in one hinge right here to get you back and forth. Well, 
but and then it plugs in by plugging the this cylinder there into the back and then one underneath into his nether regions and he'll be all right now it's not really an accessory but it might as well should be um, there is a piece that goes here it's this it has a tendency to pop out while you're messing around it should have been glued uh, in my opinion but uh, if it does pop out fear not it will go back in with no problem it's time let's talk about them there's a lot of good here a couple issues we'll get to them the head sculpt is beautiful absolutely beautiful it arguably perfect it has a nice uh, purple fleck finish throughout most of it which really makes it look like a masterpiece there's something about that paint that makes things stand out it just it just gives you that feel that you want uh, we also have some red paint inside of there it is painted clean but it is also painted it's not just painted on the lines it's painted along the uh, the, the rim so to speak of of those uh, indentations which some people may think is outside the lines but it's not and it could also uh, kind of be seen as a glow like a, a light sourcing effect so I'm okay with all that nice chrome eyes sharp as a tack just beautiful uh, the same sort of purple and then we have the white finish on the face and then the little gray triangle on the beard we have a hinge swivel for the head which is my favorite sort of articulation for a masterpiece it gets you up to there only issue is you don't get much down and for a big bot like this I think it's kind of important for him to be able to look down at you uh, that's just something that I feel and then the next swivels no problem we have this silver finish on uh, the top of the neck purple finish throughout this is die cast here there may be this might be die cast here yeah I think it is on the sides this is a heavy boy we got the gunmetal finish there that's plastic and then that is red and it looks like it has a paint on it as well really really sharp for the arms we have universals with soft ratchets front and back hard ratchets out to the side works fine we have a bicep swivel and then kind of uh, a second one, but not really. It's there. That's a little tight. That's paint. That's a paint issue tolerance wise, I would imagine. Uh, and that's mainly for transformation, but it's really just the one bicep swivel. And then you have a double jointed elbow that gets you the full range, but it does totally destroy the sculpt. We have silver paint there and then we have white paint there both of which look good the hand the is the wrist has a swivel and then it also has a hinge in and out which is awesome you can get that bad boy up and you know like i don't know it's just like having having a hand down to the side at like a little bit of an angle and stuff like that i just i love that sort of stuff you could even swivel this piece here and then have it like you know like i'll get you sucker so all that stuff is really, really, really well thought out. And I mean, um, articulation wise, it works extremely well. Now we have something that I don't think works as well as some of the ones they've done in the past, which are the fingers. These fingers, uh, they work fine. They're uh, individually articulated, which isn't my favorite, but fans toys does them best in my opinion. We have a hinge here, basically. Let me zoom in a little bit, give you guys a real good look. So a hinge there at the base knuckle and then a hinge and a hinge. So each finger has each knuckle, which is fine. The problem is for me that I feel like this hand is, let me make sure we're focused, is disproportionate. Like I feel like his hands are too big. Like he's going to put the big hand on you. You know, like your hand should be like about as big as your face. You know, and obviously it's a robot, so it's going to be a little different, and I get all that. But his hand is is like it's bigger than his whole head. It's just big, old, like you know, old Galvy big hands. All right, so let's continue. We have this red translucent plastic used here. Smart choice. Paint would have probably looked sharper to me, but I don't think it's a bad choice. I do think it makes it look interesting. And the same is used down here on the knees. Uh, we have a waist swivel that's ratcheted. You can get all the way around and then we have the same articulation for the arm on the other side all good 
We have uh, these hip skirts, they get out of the way to show another set of universals for the hips. By the way, we have some red paint on there just for funsies. And we have a silver finish here. Uh, the silver finish on the thighs, you get the thighs out to here on friction. It holds really well, but I wish it were ratcheted. But I know it's not very, uh, this one's a little bit looser. It's not very Vogue to have ratchets going out to the side nowadays because everybody wants to be able to control the A stance, which I get, but a, a really fine toothed ratchet could get you that. We have a thigh swivel and it's done right on the on the sculpt line so it doesn't interrupt the sculpt whatsoever. We finally have knee pads that are deserving of Galvatron, uh, which I've been a stickler about since the beginning. Shout out to Kev, he, he was as well. That has a purple finish on it. We have the gunmetal finish down here and here. This is plain plastic. This is the only part that's like large part that's really not painted. And with everything else being painted, doesn't bother me. We have the ankles, they tilt down, destroys the sculpt, but they do it. And they don't really tilt up. You can open this up, which gets you like just maybe a mill millimeter. I'm trying to use measurements that the rest of the world uses, pardon me. Uh, anyway, it doesn't really get you that much. It's not really, I don't know, it's not really worth breaking up the sculpt, in my opinion. Uh, and then the feet themselves are die cast. Uh, you have an ankle rocker that's here that also destroys the sculpt but is effective. Uh, and you're only going to use this for a really extreme pose anyway, so I don't think it's really a big deal. And then you have a toe pivot here as well as a hinge there for transformation, but you still get it. It would have been nicer if you could have got it up as well. Most people are going to use it posing wise for that, but it still works. A beautiful gunmetal finish on the toes white finish on the toes even though it looks like michael jackson's shoes from smooth criminal it still looks good back of the figure uh, isn't the cleanest but i don't find that too utterly distracting i personally would have been okay if it was a parts forming piece for this stabilizer but i know a lot of people wouldn't have so i get why they did it um it's definitely a criticism the same with these treads on the shoulders but uh, it, it ultimately doesn't distract me from the figure, especially because from the front, it's pretty much seamless. One thing I do want to discuss about the feet before we move on is <clears throat> it is sometimes a, I wish there was a heel spur. It is sometimes a bit troublesome to get the foot perfectly balanced and also make him look intimidating. That is something that I find uh, a little obnoxious while posing this guy. It's not the worst thing in the world. It's not a deal breaker, but it's definitely a criticism. And you know what else I didn't mention? Double jointed knees that get you the full Monty. And size comparison wise, there he is with uh, Masterpiece Rodimus and X Transbot Scourge which I think looks on the money. Now, I didn't. I don't have uh, X-Trans by Cyclonus because I just couldn't, but I like the way that this looks. All right, so we're going to get him transformed. Now, this transformation isn't the easiest, so uh, bear with me and, and try, to, try to keep up the best you can. Make sure that the fist is like this, where the fingers are flat against the back of the hand and the thumb is sitting up on top. And then what you need to do is expand this, uh, this armature here, when you do so, you'll see that there's a slot there and a tab that will lock together if you have them lined up properly and you apply enough pressure. And then what you need to do is you need to, uh, let's see here, let's keep this, let's bring this down and we need to keep the arm so that you can see the screws here, both at the below the armature and on the forearm, but then you want to turn the hand around so that it is still facing forward. And then try to keep it aligned the best you can. Bring this down, this will tab into there, the back of the forearm, that comes down, this piece comes forward and locks it all together. Then you want to rotate the entire thing to the back and get it out of the way. So let's do that again. We're going to bring this out to the back, this armature here. We're going to close this up and lock it together by making it. It's not too hard, so just make sure you have it all straight. That's the problem. It's getting it all aligned. Rotate it to the back 
so that you can see the screws, but then turn the hand around so that you're looking at the back of the hand. Drop this armature down, it'll peg into the back of the forearm while allowing that cavity space for the hand as long as it is lined up right. And then flip this piece down and around to lock it all in place. Move it 180 around and get it out to the side. Now we're just gonna open them up. So we're gonna pull these flank pieces down, which I just almost did a disservice to myself. We're gonna pull this piece down, which I'm just trying to be mindful of this paint. The last thing I wanna do is mess that up. Get that out of the way. On the back, we're gonna lift these pieces up. We're gonna bring this piece down, and then we're gonna open up that piece there. That will allow you to use this piece in here where that peg is and rotate up and back basically on a double hinge. This part is kind of a pain. You need to kind of move this whole assembly up, this piece here. And that also helps lever this piece down where the neck is on. And then you need to get enough space to bring this piece out. Uh, it gets easier after you've done it a couple times and kind of loosened it up, but it is a tight fit. At that point, you want to swing the cannon kind of holster around to the back, but keep this bit facing the way it was. Now on the other side, you need to make sure that this piece gets flipped all the way through. At that point, you can disconnect the shoulder pads from the shoulder pads, <laughs> which is a... Uh, you know, it's just a little scary, but you, you kind of, I don't know, you get used to it. Then bring it up and then bring it down, the whole thing, including the top pad, and lock it in. And it will, you'll know it when you got it. We'll try it on this side, if I can illustrate it once. Uh, let's see, so we're going to separate. Bring up and then flip down. There, that went, and that's locked in position. So I'll get this one off camera. Now we gotta clean some of this up. My advice is to make sure that these two things here, you see them on the side, make sure that they're aimed towards the middle so they don't get caught up on anything. Make sure that the head is squared up the best you can. And then rotate this whole assembly down, which will tuck the head into that cavity. Then you want to bring these up. And actually, I think you can probably, let's see. Let's see if we can't close this now just to get some of this stuff out of the way. Because it, it does get a little intimidating when you're looking at all these pieces that need to find a, a home. So there, that's that. You can flip this piece up. These pieces need to come down and go into there on both sides, into the shoulder pads. And then this piece comes up. Let me see here, what am I doing wrong? And these come around. It's hard to explain but it should be, it's, it is fairly intuitive uh, for, for as many moving pieces as it kind of is. And then this piece comes down and then that all locks together nice and tight. You should have the cannon in the, in the back, the uh, suspension piece or the stabilizer in the back, and then the toes in the front and the chest in the front. And what we need to do is spin this so that the toes are in the front, the cannon is in the front, and this chest piece is in the front, and the armature is on the back. You just want to open up. You just get all this stuff out of the way. Fold the foot around and then fold it in on itself. That's easy. You got to bring this piece down. It was sitting up here. Bring this piece down and then fold this piece out. 
you can open up this as well. And then you got to kind of combine or worse the leg in. And it has to fit right there. And then that piece comes forward. And this piece comes around. encompasses that. So we'll do that again, fold the foot around and then onto itself. Open this up, open this gunmetal part up and get it out of the way. Get that piece open, fold this down, flip that out. Make sure that you uh, slide that bar down here. This piece here is on the slider, you can see it move. And then you need to combine or worse that down, fold that down, and then fold. You can use these hip skirts, they actually pivot up a bit so that you can get that all the way around. And that's the two legs. This part is frustrating, but it's also brilliant to me. So you take this armature, you fold it down, it comes through the legs, there's a little groove right there. I don't know if you can see it or not, that it kind of aligns in. But there are plenty of guides along the way to kind of help you get it where it needs to go. So we're going to do it from this side so that we can align this tab, this tab with that open slot. I'm not even sure if you can see any of that. And this tab and this tab with their corresponding opening slots. And it does fit like a glove. And then you just fold these pieces in here into the sides of the legs. Open these up. You can fold this piece into the pelvis. That locks that in. And then fold this piece down. And this little notch here will go around that tab. And same for the other side. And it all kind of solidifies in a manner in which you wouldn't necessarily think it would. It takes some finagling uh, and it takes a little bit of practice, but once it's done, it's it's just kind of done. I, I don't know, it's it's surprisingly intuitive for being sort of as, as many moving pieces in that area as it is. This section I wanted to show you separately because I have a trick for it that I'm not sure is the way they show in the instructions. But flip these pieces down here, this is on the opposite side. Make sure this is lined up the best you can. You want these two slots to go into here. You're gonna have to use this double joint in order to do so. And what I have found works best is kind of bring it back and overshoot the hole, so to speak, and then sort of rock it down as you move it down and try to grab it along the way. Now, I, mine got separated here, but if you use that method, it, uh, it works fairly well, and that solidifies, uh, par par partially solidifies the top and bottom. On the other side, you have to make sure that this tab there is tabbed into the bottom. Now, I believe on the instructions, they kind of make it seem like you should put force there. I can tell you, at least for a big finger gentleman like myself, it's very challenging. But if you just push down on the top, it'll go in, allowing you then to use this double hinge, which is a little tight. To tab in and that solidifies the underside of the top and bottom. And then it's just a matter of cleaning it up. Make sure these tabs here fit into the side, even further securing it. It, uh, if you if you're not lined up right there's a hinge right here and it is a little challenging sometimes to, to pr kind of pre-plan the exact angle there and then take these you might notice one of our old friends return as we go to manipulate these the old fans toys squeak and then they lay down by its side. Let's see if I can't, oh, there's our old buddy. And then that lays down by its side. And then just make sure these are out here. 
you want to turn this around at the top angle your feet down take your cannon find the corresponding notch plug it in and you're done let me clean it up we'll take a look at it and I love it uh, I think it is very indicative of the character. You can articulate this down. You can even articulate it down here if you want to get it at a bit of a higher angle. Um, you know, it looks silly, but you can do it. I guess you could fold it down and use the gun move, but who would want to do that? And it's, it's just, it's good. It feels good. These feel a little fat because they use the arms instead of the flaps. I think that uh, Tyrant kind of did that better. It took a lot of force to push it down. It's it's good. You know, it, like, so we talked recently, right, about making sacrifices. And the, the few sacrifices that I feel that this makes for alt mode uh, are definitely worth the cost of admission and are relatively minuscule. There it is next to Tiger Tracks. I think that's dead on. Uh, little things they did, like being able to turn this, having this stuff out to the side that I don't feel like they had to do, it just makes it feel so finished to me. I think it's really clean, and I think it's a relatively complex transformation. There's some hard-to-move parts because there's a lot of die cast and there's a lot of bulk, so it's kind of hard to get the force to move things at the proper angle at times. But... I think that might be one of those things where after you do it a few times, it loosens up because even the, the hardest part for me was flipping the, the head and the back piece. And even that was easier doing it on camera than it was doing it the first time I did it. So I uh, I don't know what to tell you other than uh, I can get behind this. Final thoughts wise, let's get the negatives out of the way. <clears throat> the feet are a little wonky. It is kind of challenging to get them posed right. It is possible. It's just something that just feels a little abnormal. The hands are disproportionately big to the body. And for me, I find it distracting. There are a few things like paint mix match stuff, like the fingers aren't painted with the purple, but it's really, it's really very, very minor. It's also made up of pieces that are very heavy and very large, so manipulating them can sometimes be a bear. However, in the same breath, they do allow you to get the leverage to eventually get the job done after you're more comfortable and the piece is more loosened up. Ultimately, I don't think that the cannon mode is as effective as the robot mode, but I think the cannon mode is still effective, and I think the sacrifice is one that's willing to be made in order to get the robot mode to look as good as it does. And lastly, I feel like there are a couple pieces that should have been glued in, like those things on the back of the shoulders. And also, uh, I noticed that this, uh, like, uh, this red translucent piece here in the abdomen, I had to push back in. It was starting to wedge out. So that, that probably all could have benefited from being glued in. But please make no mistake, this guy is absolutely spectacular. The paint is brilliant. It is the exact type of paint I'm talking about when I say a masterpiece should look a certain type of way. It utilizes finish, it utilizes metallic flex, translucence, glossy coats. It pulls out all the tricks, it pulls out all the stops. The articulation works well. It is a big bot, so it is gonna be a bit cumbersome in some places. It's to be expected with, a, with a, any figure, let alone robot of this size. The materials are second to none. The transformation is incredibly rewarding and surprisingly intuitive once you understand how the pieces move and what the tolerances are for those pieces. It's also a fairly complex transformation which Fans Toys isn't necessarily known for and I think it pulls it off beautifully. That's not to say you won't have some frustrations the first couple times through, but it is to say that it's ultimately worth it and every path is going to have a few puddles. I love this figure. I, th I I was very concerned after Lupus because I think Lupus is a huge step backward for fans toys. Huge. And I was very concerned about the, the future of this company. And I'm trying to, in 2017, I'm trying to make a few New Year's resolutions and one of those is to stop buying filler pieces. To only buy pieces that I know 
I have a hard time, an extremely hard time parting with, regardless of what the competition may bring forth. And this is one of those figures. Now, who knows how that'll hold up, but it is my intention. However, a lot of New Year's resolutions tend to go by the wayside with me. 2017 is the year I get healthy. What? Look, don't judge me, all right? You ain't perfect. But I highly, highly, highly recommend this figure. I highly recommend 215 Toys and my buddy Hung over there. And if you're a Galvatron fan, get it. If you're a Decepticon fan, get it. If you're a Masterpiece Collector, get it. It's not perfect, but it's probably the best robot I've gotten since Carnifex. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care. <laughs>